Heavenly Father, as we gather today, let us open our hearts and minds to the presence of the Lord. Let us cast away the distractions of the world and center ourselves in this sacred moment. In this time of reflection and communion, let us remember the beauty of your creation that surrounds us, the whisper of the wind, the warmth of the sun, and the rhythm of the life that beats within us all. Let us be grateful for the gift of community, for the opportunity to come together in fellowship and support. May we find strength and solace in each other's presence, knowing that we are not alone in this journey of faith. Let us also remember those who are in need, those who are suffering, and those who are marginalized. May our worship today inspire us to acts of compassion and justice, to reach out with love to all those who are in need of healing and hope. As we embark on this sacred time of worship, may our hearts be open, our spirits be lifted, and our minds be filled with your wisdom. Amen. Let us begin this morning's worship service by singing hymn number 468 in the blue hymnal, Be Thou My Vision. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this day, we give you thanks for the gift of life. We don't take it for granted. And we thank you for gathering us here for this service. We ask that you bless it, all the parts of it, the singing, the preaching, and our fellowship. Let it be a time where we meet with you and where we are renewed and re-strengthened, Lord, for the, for the week to come. Bless us as we finish up uh, the Lent season, Lord, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Sire liye vort nyal hair, shnura galenk der ais orvan amar ais havak velu aritin amar ort ne der ais bashta munka vorbesi hantu bumma la ku nergayut yanat het mezi amar ok ne vor popo khutyun la mer mech 
եւ որքու հոգիտ մեր մեջը ալլա այս փոլորը գհանցնենք քեզի եւ գխնդրենք այս փոլորը հիսուս քրիստոսի անունով ամեն Let's recite the Apostles' Creed uniting us with the church from the very beginning saying I believe in God the Father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to hell on the third day he rose from the dead he descended into heaven and sits on the right hand of god the father from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen you may be seated good morning it's almost spring day uh during this lent season glad to be here with you today um First I'd like to thank uh, Simone Anelian for hosting today's uh, coffee hour. There's a lot of events going on in the life of the church. Um next Sunday is Palm Sunday, so we're um got all the activities of Holy Week coming up. Uh you'll see that listed in the back of your program. Um there's also several other events going on I just wanted to highlight. Uh this evening there will be a youth group meeting taking place at the Tombalakian house from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh so please let your children know about that. Um on Saturday, April 13th, there is a potluck dinner and movie night taking place right here at the church. Um Jesse Tombalakian and Jocelyn Cornelian uh are the contacts for that event. Uh there's also uh a kind of a unique event uh the AMAA is sponsoring here at APC uh Victor Karapetyan AMAA's representative of Artsakh uh will be speaking uh this event will also be live streamed um on YouTube but um uh, he will be here in person and then I also wanted to mention on March 23rd our mission committee uh led by Jason Cornelian will be uh serving at the um father's cupboard uh so please RSVP uh, and reach out to Jocelyn. Yes, Margaret. This Thursday. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I miss Thank you. Yeah, so this Thursday 7:30 to 9:30. Yeah. Um one other thing I wanted to mention um there's a contact information little form outside uh in the Northanks if you want to complete that and submit that uh we'll make sure to um keep you in touch with everything going on at APC so please uh complete that um let's continue this morning's worship service by singing hymn number 36 in the red hymnal beneath the cross of Jesus
Our Armenian scripture reading is taken out of uh, the Apostle Paul's letter to the Church of Philippi. I sorvan me norge da garni en terzuma arnvaze pili betsineron namagen yerort kluchen das niergukhen ksan megerort hamar nera. Chem ser te arten hachogadz yev gadar elutian hasadzem pais hasnelu gtsktim vorovedev jist ador amar Christos Jesus zis bahets yev parner ingzink ester gadar elutian hasadz chem hamarer Pait gashkhadim antsiala mornal yev kalikin nail yev ushatir gerbov gvazem tebin badagagede iprev mrtsanak stanalu hamar havidenagan gyanke vorunga hravire mezastvats Kristos Hisusov art menk vor gadarial enk noin tsevov khorink isk yete tuk vorosh gederu shurch darper gkhorik asvats ink tsez bidi lusapane amen barakai Mias na par kaleng aingan on nero vorons moven tatsang minchev hima. Yech par ner in zinem anetsek. Yev hedevetsek anons vorong tsezi devats mer orinagov gentanan. Vorovede vinchpes hajach gesei, yev hima yeves lalov gesem, mer mechkan shader vorons gyanka tishnamanke Christosi hachin. Anons verche goruste vorovede virens astvaza irens porne. Amotali panerov gha bardanan ye mi ayn yer gravor paneru masin gkhorin menk sagayn yerginki ka katsinerenk yev honge gspasenk vor kamer pergiche Jesus Christos vor mer mahganatsu marmin nere bidi gerbanana pokhe yev ir marminin bes paravor tartsene ir zorutyampe vorov gerna amen inch ir ishkhanuntyan yentargel togdere ortne ais entertsuma poloris gernak nstil you may be seated Before I begin my Armenian message, I just want to recognize that uh, many of the board members of Haigazian University, or not university, uh, from Lebanon are here today. So welcome. Uh, I know they had a meeting uh, this weekend. Uh, also welcome back, Zavan, uh, from the AMAA. Uh, we, uh, as I said, you can follow our uh, Armenian message uh, on the synopsis. We're talking about Christ, our goal. Gavadam vor asvada shunche mezi guzap guze pochancel vor havada tsialin gyanke Christos uni iprev nebadaga get iprev tirach. Vochuner sireliner minch aisor vidi chosing nebadak nerumasin. Yerpeman nebadak gam nebadaga get. Pare chipaver yer hisusi masin garda hai devink. Inch panne Christosi masin vor bet ke merne badaga alla aispisi harcerov bidi sparing aisor. Ye bidi le seng te bos arakiala inch kese ais garevor nutin masin. Norengesem mer teman aisor aine te Ein anse vor ing zinke Christon yaga go che bet ke Christos iprev ans ir nebadaga unena. Kich ma aveli manamas tutiam chosing. Gavadam vor mergyanke jam portutium mene vor bet ke Jesus unena vochte miain iprev verchavorutyun ael naev iprev michots. Havadat sialin gyanke jam portutium mene Vor bet ke unena Jesus iprev michots yev naev verchavorutyun. Asvaza shunche vaski mamasin gkhosi ais pili betsneru hatvazim mech. Yev arait gyanke jamportutyun mne uremen vask mne vogim byagan khagerun neman voron entatskin bet ke izkushutyamp kidaktsutyamp yev hstak nebadagov vazel. Arakiala gese yes chem seberte pernadzem. I think in Mertanaga iper ir verchnagan leratats pergutuna inke che estatats einimastov vor arten inke tracht gekitnevi. Sagain voroshadze jisht sevo vazelu, yedev tsekelov amen anciali yeradznera, ir nach king yankin mech badahadznera. Yev voroshelov arach yertalu. Gerta tebi astzo gamkin. 
աստծո գոչումին, որը միայն գրնահասնել Քրիստոսի միջոցով։ Եկեղեցիներն ալ գսե, պետք է նույն ցևով մտածեն։ Ոևե մեկը չէ շահած մրցանակը, բայց բոլոր ավադացյալներն ալ պետք է թեբի աստծո կացո գենցաղը ունենան։ Ասված ամեն մեկուն օկնած է, որ շնորհք ունենա իրենց դրված չափով։ Ուրեմն հավատացյալը պետք է այդ չափին համացայն աբրի։ Բետ չէ ասզո շնորկը ծկել գսե առակյալը և փորձել ուրիշ ժամփով մը կալել։ Եթե հավատացյալները գրնան առակյալին որինագովը երթալ, արդեն Քրիստոսի պարեգամ ու հետևո գլան և ոչ թե թշնամի։ Եվ գսե առակյալը Հիսուսի թշնամիները անոնք են, որ գերագուրի որենքներով գսպաղին ինչպես անհավատ հրյաները և որ իրենց մովսիսագան թլպադությամբ կամ անպարո գենցաղով գհբարդանան։ Եթե ձակումով հրյայ է ին պայց նորահավատներ, այս խոսկը իրենց դագավին որենքին գապվածության համար էր, որենք մավոր չի պրգեր զանոնք։ Իսկ եթե ձակումով հետանոս էին մդի գնողները, խոսկը իրենց ընդանուր անարակ անցիալին մասին էր, որ մաս կգազմեր գարկ մհունագան պիլիսոպայագան թբրոցներու և դագավին ոմանց գհրաբուրեր։ Բայց Քրիստոնյան այս աշխարի սովորություններուն հնազանդ լալու չէ։ Քրիստոնյան երգինքի աստուծո թակավորության, աստուծո գարկ ու գանոնին, աստուծո պրգիչին գբատկանի և ոչ թե աշխարի ինքնագոչ պրգիչներուն։ Եպ որ վականցի գերթաս որինագի ամար գամ այլ երգիր գայցել ես, ինքնատուղթը թե դտ կլլա։ Կիտես որ այդ մյուս երգրի մեջը այցելու ես։ Այո այդ տեղի որենքներով բիդի ընթանաս, բայց միշտ միտքիտ մեջը գիշ ես պամ մգա, որ թուն այդ երգրին կաղաքացին չես։ Այդ երգիրին սովորությունները գրնաս որոշ չապով սորվիլ, բայց սիրդըտ գմնա կու հայրենիքիտ մեջ, սիրդըտ գմնա Քրիստոսի մեջ, Քրիստոսի հետ։ Եվ ոչ թե այս աշխարին վրա գետրոնացած և աշխարի սովորություններուն մեջ։ Հետևապար, եթե մենք մեր գյանքի նբադագը իպրև Քրիստոսը ունենանք, շատ ավելի այդ ժիշտ ճամպով բիդի գարենանք ընթանալ, ավելի հոքևոր գերբով բիդի ալան մեր որոշումն Հիսուսի սերը բիդի չուզենք, որ այդ նբադագը անշուշտ մեր դեսիլքեն հերանա։ Գյանք մը, որ թեվի Հիսուս ուղված է Հիսուսով բիդի հանք չի։ Իսկ գյանք մը, որ Հիսուսը չի դեսներ բիդի վերջանա թադաբարդությա� Ասված դա, որ Հիսուսով և թեբի Հիսուս կալենք։ Մորնանք անցյալի չպրգող պաները, չպրգող սպաղումները, չպրգող չասվածները։ Եվ շարունագենք թեբի արջև, թեբի վերջնագան մեր հանքիստը, թե Հիսուսով և թե Հիսուսի թե իպրև միջոց և թե իպրև վերջավորություն, հավադացյալին գյանքը Քրիստոս ունենալու է իպրև նբադագագետ, դերո որդնից ես, ամեն։ About once a month, we like to have our children come around and we love to hear them talk about the Lord, so are they coming? Very good. Usually we hear them. Come on down. Let's make a semicircle this way. Don't all sit there. 
sit this way. Come on. Let's go. You don't get anything special for staying away. <laughs> You get to hear me better, and you get to see the pictures I'm going to show you. Because I always have pictures to show you, right? All right. Well, we'll have that conversation later, because you're very interested in having a conversation with me. That's good. We want the kids to be comfortable with their pastor. All right. First, I'm going to read a Bible verse to you, and then I'm going to show you some pictures. Okay. All right, now this is Jesus, and this is what he said to his disciples. He said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Okay, that's John chapter 13. Okay, now I'm going to show you some pictures. What is this? Okay, so what's a lion like? Okay, we'll start here. It has a beard, okay. Some of them do, yes. Uh, yes. It doesn't have any predators, okay. Uh, not a lot. Yes. Yes, it eats a lot of meat. Yeah, we'll get to everybody. Yes. They're carnivores. Okay, very scientific. Yes. I'm sorry? They have a mane. Yes, we said that. Yes. They're ferocious. Okay, those are the kinds of words I want to hear. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, what about... Um, what kind of animal are they? Not just what they eat, but they're ferocious. What else are they? You raised your hand. Okay, you said that. What else? Okay, what else? Okay, what are we talking about here? You know what we're talking about? We're going to move to the next animal now. Okay, one at a time. One at a time, please. Yes. They're bold. Okay. So what we're talking about is the characteristics. Hello, listen, listen, listen. We're talking about the characteristics of a lion. Now we're going to move to the next animal, okay? It's not a rhinoceros. What is this? Okay, all right. Hold on, hold on. One at a time. What is a cheetah like? Okay, a cheetah is fast. All right, you. It has spots. Yes. It is fast. What else is it besides fast? Yes. People don't eat it. Okay. Yes. It's another carnivore. And? They need breaks when they're running. Okay, very good. Good job. All right, now let's go to the third one. All right, one at a time. Hold on. All right. Okay, we know it's a bird. Now tell me the characteristics of a bird. All right, you first and then you. Go ahead. It has wings, but what is it like? Yes. It's always flying, yes. It makes tweet sounds, yes. It can sing, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Now listen to me. Listen very closely. Do you know why I did this? It's because I wanted you to think about the characteristics of these animals. But then I want you to remember what we read in the beginning. What was the word that was used a lot in the beginning when we read the Bible verse? Do you remember? It starts with an L. It is love. That's right. So a characteristic of a Christian is what? Love. love. What does that mean? That means that we care. Exactly. 
about one another. Y you, you care about each other. And that means that if you want to be a good Christian, one of the most important things that you need to know is how to love each other. Yes? Did you get that? Okay, so what's the characteristic of a Christian? Love. love. If somebody asks you, what are you all about? What's this Christian thing like? What are you going to tell them? Okay, very good. All right, close your eyes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us the characteristic of a Christian. Just like we know what other animals are like, we want to know how to love even better, Lord. Bless each child that is here and their parents and thank you for bringing them here so they can hear about you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. This is our lesson for today. All right? Don't forget, love. Go ahead. All right. That's not just the future, but also the present of our church. And it's a joy to have them every single time. Okay. Um, as always, we are praying for various things, and, and we like to open it up to you for prayer requests. But we will be mentioning uh, APC, the AMAA, the, the uh, AEUNA, we'll be mentioning Armenia and uh, Artsakh. Um, we'll also be mentioning Arus Darpinian today. A uh, special request came for her. But if you have any other prayer requests that you would like for me to mention out loud, yes. Okay. First name? Miguel, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Urish, anybody else? Ramna. Karen. Are we praying for their marriage? Maggie. Ayo. Thank you. Let's pray. Please play ar alongside of me as I lift all of these up. Um, before the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you that you are the God who hears prayer and answers it. And though your answers at times may seem to tarry, yet when you do answer, it, it, it is uh, astounding and uh, sometimes uh, even almost unbelievable. But when you do it, Lord, it's amazing. And so we ask that your answers would come sooner rather than later and that they would be clear and recognizable by us, we who are but frail human beings, um, but who have your spirit uh, inside of us, Lord. You've given us life that we would have relationship with you from the very beginning, and we are grateful that you are with us today. Father, you have heard all of the names that have been uh, said out loud, and you also hear those that are not said out loud. And so there are many prayer requests represented in this room. There are things that people are happy about, people are struggling with, Lord. And so we lift those up before you as we also mention the ones that were mentioned out loud. We lift up Elizabeth before you. We ask that you continue to strengthen her as she goes through the rounds of chemo. And we ask that uh, your miracle uh, would happen in her body. We lift up Karen and her husband. Uh, we ask that you be the healer of the marriage and that you would strengthen them to look to you 
to learn how to love one another. We pray for uh, John uh, as he continues his journey to, to be healed of his shoulder injury. We thank you that Miguel is with us today, and we pray that you would work in his life, that you would address his concerns, and that you would answer his prayers. We lift up Antranig and Maggie. Um, we ask that you strengthen them in faith so that they would um, continue to lift, lift us up in prayer and also be strong themselves, both physically and spiritually. We lift up Arus uh, Darpinian before you uh, for her health as well, spiritually and physically. And all of those, uh, Lord, that cannot normally make it, uh, whether they are here or elsewhere, uh, a different part of the U.S. Uh, or the world that normally come. We ask that you strengthen them physically and spiritually. Uh, we lift up, Lord, the ministry and the mission of Haigazan University. We ask that you continue to strengthen it and supernaturally protect it, uh, that it would continue to be a beacon of light uh, in a sea of darkness, uh, and that you would continue to give the teachers grace um, and ability so that they would shine uh, in that environment in the Middle East. Uh, we also lift up uh, uh, our compatriots in Armenia and also the refugees of Artsakh. We ask that your hand would be upon our people in that area of the world. Um, they need your intervention. Only you can stop impending disaster and you are the one that will give them peace, even though the world looks like it is in chaos. Lord, you are the ultimate Prince of Peace, and we look to you for answers. We, we also lift up the AMAA as it continues to be your hands and your feet wherever uh, our communities are found. We lift up the AEUNA, uh, to which this church is a member, uh, with, with all of its mission to raise up new servants as well as to sustain uh, many of the churches alongside the AMAA. Um, and we lift up APC before you, our church, with all of its ministries. We ask that you pour your spirit out upon us, uh, that we would change and be those people that can house the many that are looking for you uh, among our pews and, and among our families. Uh, let us be that place of love, that place of welcoming, that people are looking for, so that they would know who you are and that they would feel comfortable and as a family along with us. To these, we, we join all of the silent prayers of your, of your people, both here and watching online, and we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I just uh, wanted to mentioned that uh, when I was giving the uh, church life announcements, I kind of referenced you to look at the bulletin for all the activities, but I just wanted to highlight them. So we are having the traditional annual uh, Palm Sunday uh, dinner following worship service next Sunday. We will have our traditional Maundy Thursday service here at the church at 7 p.m. on Thursday, uh, Maundy Thursday, and on Sunday, Easter Sunday, we will be having our traditional Easter morning breakfast uh, given by our APC Sunday School uh, starting at 9 a.m. So with that, um, I'd like to invite the ushers forward to take this morning's uh, offering.
Heavenly Father, as we come before you in this moment of offering, we give thanks for the abundance of blessings you have bestowed upon us. You have provided for our needs and enriched our lives in countless ways. As we present these gifts to you, we do so with hearts full of gratitude and humility. May these offerings be a symbol of our commitment to your work in the world, a tangible expression of our desire to participate in the building of your kingdom of love and justice. Bless these gifts, O God, and use them to further your purposes on earth. May they bring comfort to the afflicted, sustenance to the hungry, and hope to the oppressed. May they be a source of light in the darkness, a beacon of your love shining forth for all to see. Guide us, O Lord, in the stewardship of all that you have entrusted to our care. Help us to use these resources wisely and faithfully, always mindful of the needs of others and the call to serve. We offer these prayers and these gifts in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to love and to give generously. Amen. Good morning. Do we know this song, Shout to the Lord? Yes? Yes. Okay, then please shout to the Lord with us. Here we go. Here we go. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, that every breath, all that Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my 
and amen. Thank you. Our scripture reading today is taken out of Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 14, and we're talking about two important realities today. But let's go ahead and read the scripture so you can have a seat. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep them putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. May the Lord bless this reading to each of us. You may be seated. Persistence and humility is what we're talking about today. Persistence in prayer and a steady humility in life are key characteristics of a healthy follower in Christ. If you want to be a healthy Christian spiritually, persistence in prayer and humility in your attitude are keys. So greetings as we finish out our Lenten Sundays by taking a look at two well-known parables from the mouth of our Lord. The parable of the unjust judge is a classic image of a situation which is still very common in today's world. And the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector is also no different. Both of these have specific messages to tell each of us. Both are often misunderstood and can cause much confusion if we're not careful in reading and interpreting them, interpreting the text. And therefore, we're going to talk about persistence and humility, but our goal is going to be to bring about a clearer understanding, interpretation, and conclusion for each of these parables. So I pray that if you don't remember anything else about this message, that you get the conclusions, if not, the process by which we reach them. Again, persistence in prayer and a steady life humility are key characteristics of a healthy Christian. Let's talk about persistence. A persistent, prayerful attitude will go a long way in keeping us on the right path in this faith journey with Christ. Let's look at the details of the picture that our Lord Jesus paints in the parable. Now, Luke the evangelist already tells us why Jesus told the parable. The disciples were sometimes tempted to give in to the pressure of stepping back from their mission to spread the good news. It was not easy going into synagogues and having conversations with their compatriots who had already seen a half a dozen failed messianic figures and were reeling under the pressures and the taxes of the Roman Empire with no end in sight to the pressure. It was not easy for them to break through when the Pharisees had been busy making sure that their spiritual lives were stifled, limited, 
to the point where they felt like failures and they had to give up because there was no way to be as holy as a Pharisee, or so they thought. So Jesus gives the picture of a judge that was the opposite of what you wanted in a judge in those days. Now, a valuable trait of a citizen of God's kingdom in those days was to have favor with God and with man. And if you read the account of Jesus' childhood, there is a phrase in there where Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. But this judge did not have that favor. He just didn't care about anybody but himself. Now, this judge is the most difficult kind of judge you can have because his judgments are usually controlled by the highest bidder. Widows, though they were considered a special protected class by God and were supposed to be protected by the government, had no protection and no voice in reality. If they had to go to court, which this widow did, it was a forbidding place, male-dominated, and there was no formal order like today in the courts. Back then, it was a noisy affair, and it would not be inconceivable that this widow was shouting her case at the judge repeatedly just to be heard day after day, perhaps even week after week, if not more. And so the judge fears that eventually she may come and attack him. But get this, the idea of the attack comes from the Greek word to blacken his face. Not the eye, but the face. Now in Armenian and other languages, there is an expression that is to whiten one's face. Yeres jermuktsenel. It's even in Arabic and some others. This is the opposite. The judge was afraid of his reputation because he was expected to be impartial and like God in his dealings and not be taking bribes. But the picture also talks about something else that's important, which gives you a clue that this isn't about just the unjust judge. The picture talks about granting justice. Now, that kind of language is eschatological or dealing with things that have to do with the end of the world. This is about also granting justice in the end of time. It is an echo of the end times language when God will come and grant justice to all Christ followers, which is the whole church. So, Jesus asks, will not God bring about justice for his elect, his chosen ones? Go, folks, when we say chosen ones, we're talking about Christ followers. His immediate followers were in view, of course, but also those that would come afterwards in future generations. Yes, Jesus says, Christians, those that follow him, they will get justice. But the real question isn't whether they will get justice. The question is, will he find one on the earth when he comes back? Will anybody be a believer in Christ then? And so this is a call to persistence, just as the widow persisted when there was literally no chance that the judge was going to rule in her favor. No chance. And we, my dear brothers and sisters, must do the same. Whether it's praying for a hopeless situation politically, either in this country or overseas, in, uh, for Armenia or wherever else you're praying for, or maybe it's a scary health diagnosis that you or somebody else you know got. Or maybe it's a terrible economic disaster that came on your family. Or it's a broken relationship that just won't get fixed. We must pray even when there is an unjust judge in front of us who has no chance of giving us a favorable judgment. That unjust judge could be any of these situations. Why? It is because God is not the unjust judge. Can I get an amen? He is just. God is fair. And his timing, in his mercy and in his power, he will answer his people who call on him in the Messiah's name. 
as difficult as that may be for some to believe after having prayed for a long time for certain things. Jesus is saying God will surely answer. And so if Jesus says it, then I am going to choose to believe it. Can I get an amen? That was a weak amen. So be persistent. You never know when and you never know how God is going to answer. You need to know that he cares about you and that he has chosen you as his child in Christ. So don't give up. Don't lose hope. Strengthen your faith with constant prayer and remember that God has answered before and he will do it again. A persistent prayerful attitude will go a long way in keeping us on the right path in this faith journey in and with Christ. Now let's talk about humility, which is an equally crucial virtue for every one of us. A truly humble attitude about our dependence on God's mercy is the only way we can really live this life out in Christ's love. You want to live as a Christian the right way? Humility is the order of the day. There is a lot to notice about the Pharisee and the tax collector's parable. You have to, you have to be a detailed person on this one or you have to slow down. The Pharisee, interestingly enough, is not described much, but the Pharisee says a lot. His description, if you pay attention to it in the scripture, is only a couple of words, but he seems to say a whole bunch. He's all talk, as they say. And knowing the culture back then and the tradition back then, they all used to pray out loud. So this was not an uncommon thing. But Jesus is making a caricature of this because Pharisees were known to go over the top with their spiritual practices way beyond what the law of Moses required. They didn't need to fast twice a week. They only needed to do that on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. But the problem with this Pharisee was he was self-absorbed, smug, complacent, and assumed everything was great between him and God. And you know what happens when you assume. We're not going to say it here. He is showing off to stand out. He is finding his security not in God's mercy, but in comparing himself to others. Everybody say, ooh. You don't want to compare yourself to others, folks. He doesn't want anybody to repent. Because then he would have nobody to compare himself to. Did you understand that? His idol would be shattered if somebody repented. He has a bad attitude despite being devout. He is pronouncing judgment on others' sins while not confessing his own. By not forgiving, he has closed his own heart to forgiveness, to receiving forgiveness. Instead of remembering that God is holy and he is unworthy, he is making himself holy and worthy. He has taken the exam, graded his own exam, and given himself an A+. How many of you know that's cheating? The tax collector, on the other hand, is a whole different picture, isn't it? He doesn't have much to say, but his posture says a lot about him. There are more words describing what he's like than what he says. First, he stands at a distance. This is significant. Because for him, there was no forgiveness or atonement that came from the priestly benediction at the temple. Because it was, it was thought and it was understood that if, if you stand in the throng of the righteous, the believers, in God, that the, the benediction that comes to you is like an atonement. It was like a... It was like a forgiveness. But for him to receive forgiveness according to that law, he would have to pay back all the people back that he, he stole from. He would have to make restitution and pay even a percentage on top to gain their favor back. So the temple and the Mosaic law could not save the sinful tax collector. Did you get that? Can I get an amen? He didn't even pray the normal way. 
which used to be to look up. He was so ashamed of himself that he could not look at heaven. And so he beat his breast, which men, by the way, did not do that often. And because that was something women did more often, especially when they were grieved about something. And what does he say? He simply says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He knows, and some translations say the sinner. He knows what he is. He knows his position. He understands that he's not all that. Everybody repeat after me, I'm not all that. Now, if you want a good exercise in humility, every morning when you get up and you're doing your thing in front of the mirror, just tell yourself, I'm not all that. I know you're laughing now, but if you have a pride issue and other people have told you that, just do that in the mirror every day and you'll remember to stay humble. Because before God, we are definitely not all that. Now, what he needs, the tax collector needs a direct line forgiveness. The system doesn't work for him. It's too hard to fulfill. God has to come to him directly. And guess what? The person telling this parable is the one who comes to us directly. Did you get that? Jesus is what this, para this uh, tax collector needs. Now, everybody's expectation while they're listening to this is that the Pharisee is the right one. Believe it or not. And so Jesus upends everybody's expectation. And he says that the tax collector who doesn't go through the law of Moses is the one who is justified. He is justified. Why? Because he doesn't pre pretend to be righteous. He simply confesses and he is honest with his own brokenness. And eventually, and more importantly, because he still reaches out to God, even though he's rejected by everybody, he is considered upright rather than the Pharisee. And that's why it rubs us the wrong way when somebody says they've done everything right and doesn't give God the credit. Now, let me tell you something. If that doesn't rub you the wrong way, then you haven't understood yet what humility is and who God is. If you cannot give God the credit and you don't make habit of giving God the credit and the glory, you are in danger of being prideful in your life. So be careful. Because I myself can do nothing and deserve nothing but hell except for Jesus Christ. If you can say that comfortably, then you can stay humble as the Lord blesses you with success. Any righteous things that I do is because of the Lord and everything else is to his glory and to his credit. In reality, this parable is more about the attitude of posturing rather than anything else. Let me explain. Some of us, now I'm going to flip the table a little bit here. Some of us become the tax collector every week. We live like heathens, and then we come back and we ask God for mercy, saying, thank God we're not like those Pharisees. God is asking us, don't do one or the other at all. Forget about the whole thing. He's asking us not to posture, but to trust him directly, despite what the law of Moses is telling you. The passage foreshadows the forgiveness of the tax collector coming because the person, as I said, who would atone for his sins has already declared the tax collector as going home upright. God is asking us not to boast of our own accomplishments before him. So let's humble ourselves before our great and holy loving father so that he can lift us up as it says in the scripture. So don't become Pharisaic in your attitude because you're no better than anyone else in your holiness. And I'm not better than anyone else either. Also, don't become a Pharisee in disguise. Don't go live like a tax collector and then make a habit of thanking God that you're not like the Pharisee. Can you see how that's the reverse? Yes? Because then, if you do that, then you've become the Pharisee again. 
So remember, be persistent in prayer because God is not an unrighteous judge that he will not give you justice. And also be humble before the Lord because you cannot love others if you think you are better than them. May the Lord bless you all and let us rise up and sing the Heidmer together. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace and serve the Lord always. Amen.